Presenting Cary Grant and Betsy Drake as Mr. and Mrs. Blanding in a new series based on Eric Hodgins' best-selling novels, Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House and Blanding's Way. Mr. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. For some strange reason, wives make a fetish of anniversaries. All sorts of anniversaries. The first date, the first kiss, even the first quarrel. But husbands are apt to forget these vital statistics. Upon such occasions, the wife cries out, Elephants can remember. Why can't you? To which the husband replies, I am not an elephant. <laughs> but this sort of rejoinder, though dignified, is scarcely a defense. I'm a mouse. And so it behooves husbands, Jim Blanding, for example, to remember any and all anniversaries. That's why we find him now trying to prove that he hasn't forgotten what Muriel is trying to remind him of. Well, don't be ridiculous, Muriel. How could I ever forget that? But we haven't even discussed what that is. Oh, I beg your pardon. Well, let's go back to the beginning of this conversation. Well, go back. You go first. No, you go. <laughs> Age before beauty. Used before distinguished. <laughs> you win. I started the conversation by saying, but you won't be home for dinner tomorrow night. Go on. Then you looked very fuddled, and I said, don't you remember what always happens in May? And then you said, of course. And I said, what? And that's when you got angry and said, don't be ridiculous, Muriel, and so forth. All right. All right, you remember. Let us say no more about it. A good idea. But I'll tell you if you have forgotten. Muriel, I have not forgotten. <laughs> Muriel, where's my toothbrush? It's there, dear. Uh, my toothbrush is orange. There's no orange toothbrush here. That's right. I bought you a new green one. <laughs> Didn't consult me. <laughs> no. Let me think. What is happening tomorrow night? Why can't I think of it? Talking to yourself, dear? Hmm? No, no, talking to that man in the mirror. <laughs> I got it. I knew I'd remember. Good old me, never forget. What, 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 what? Oh, well, go back to speak, Muriel. Weren't you talking just then? Who were you talking to? Oh, you were talking in your sleep, dear, and I answered. <laughs> really? Oh, thank you. Go back to sleep, dear. Go back to sleep, Muriel. <laughs> now, more. When Mrs. Blandings mentions our anniversary to you, for goodness sakes, don't tell her that you know I remember what she thinks I don't remember. Because if you, if you do, you see, that won't be good, because I don't want her to think I know. Would you mind repeating that, please? Lord, <laughs> no, I'm in a hurry. Now, when Mrs. Blandings mentions our anniversary, she thinks I've forgotten it. We're celebrating it tonight. Oh, really? Well, that's the second time this year. <laughs> you like the idea or the champagne? <laughs> now, Lord, this is not our wedding anniversary. This is the anniversary of the night that I proposed to Mrs. Blandings. Now, remember, I haven't said a word. Understand? Goodbye. <laughs> no, I don't understand, Mr. Blandings. Yes. Oh, oh Jim. Oh, you missed him. He thought you might want to sleep late. Oh, dear, I wanted to remind him about tonight. <laughs> I believe he knows. He does? I have a feeling he didn't. <sighs> um, eggs toast or scrambled this morning, Mrs. Blanding? Soft boiled. A toast or nothing? Rye crisp. Coffee, coffee, or coffee? <laughs> I beg your pardon, Ma. Uh, nothing. I, I just want to be a three-time loser. Oh, <laughs> um, Maude, plan a simple dinner tonight. Mr. Blandings won't be here. 
simple dinner for the children, you mean. For me, too. You'll be here? Oh, yes. Well, that's very strange, if you'll forgive my saying so. I, I really, I never go to the dentist with Mr. Blanding. The dentist? Why, yes. Every six months, he has a standing appointment to go to the dentist after work to have his teeth cleaned. Then he stays in town and has dinner afterwards. Both you and Mr. Blandings are trying to pull my leg. <laughs> if this keeps up, one of them is going to be three feet longer than the other. <laughs> I want that letter to go in, Mel. Now, uh, take a note. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Blanding. Now, after you reserve the table at Mama Macaroni's Italian Restaurant, then call Ann Hagen's Flower Shop and order, uh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, a bouquet of tiny roses. Charming thought. Macaroni bouquet, all right. Uh, Mr. Blanding's, after that, shall I call Mrs. Blanding's and check with her about meeting you? Oh, I don't think that's necessary. Oh, but he might have forgotten you. She reminded me of it only last night. See, we've met at Mama Macaroni's restaurant for this anniversary every year since the night I proposed. I'll never forget it. Oh, how romantic. I bet you were excited. I must have been. I slipped the ring on the breadstick. <laughs> Well, then, of course, Mrs. Blandings will be there. Oh, of course. She won't forget. Uh, Mrs. Blandings? Yes, Maud. What is it? I thought you might want me to press a dress or something. Why, no, thank you, Maud. To help you to prepare to go into New York to meet Mr. Blandings. But I'm not going into New York, Maud. Still pulling my leg, huh? I'm going to need one very long garter. <laughs> Margaret, what time is it? Oh, getting late, Mr. Blanding. It's almost six. Mm. Oh, it's such a nice evening. I just have time to walk to the restaurant. Now, before I leave... Help me think of a poem to go with the bouquet. Oh, I'm very bad at that sort of thing. No talent. Ah, but Margaret, you have keen critical judgment. Now, see what you think of this. Um, you're a mother, pal, and sweetheart, all rolled into one. Put them all together, and, uh... You must weigh a ton. <laughs> no, no, Margaret. Never mind, never mind. I'll think of something. But the flowers will be at the restaurant, won't they? Yes, a messenger will bring them over. Have a nice time, Mr. Blanding. Thank you, Margaret. Good night. Operator, may I have New York, please? Circle 45283. Mr. Blanding's office, please. Oh, this is Mr. Blanding's office. Oh, Margaret Mudge. This is Mrs. Blanding. Oh, hello, Mrs. Blanding. I was just about to leave the office. Oh, you caught me in time. Well, I just called to check about Mr. Blanding's appointment. I had a hunch he wouldn't remember. Oh, he didn't forget. He left to walk over there about 20 minutes ago. Good. Oh, Mrs. Blanding, Dr. Watson, Mr. Blanding's dentist, called to verify an appointment for the night with Mr. Blanding. Would you know anything about that? I told him there must be some mistake. You mean to say he isn't going to the dentist? Well, no. He's meeting you at Mama Macaroni's restaurant to celebrate your anniversary. But that isn't until next week. What'll I do? Oh, oh. Well, don't worry, Mrs. Blanding. I'll call the restaurant and leave a message. They'll ask him to call you. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Blanding. Uh, I'm sorry about the mix-up. Oh, it's all right. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Macaroni's Italian restaurant and Papa Macaroni's picture. Uh, hello, I'm calling for Mr. James Blanding. 
Oh, yes? I made a reservation for Mr. and Mrs. Blanding earlier in the day. Oh, yes. They're going to celebrate an anniversary at your restaurant. Ah, uh, yes. I'm all ready. I got a beautiful wedding of pizza. And on top, I love you with the spelled out of the spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage, that's such a beautiful thing. Are you the Mrs. Blandings? No, I'm not. Now listen, Mrs. Blandings will not be there. You're not the Mrs. Blandings? Then who are you, please? You've got such a pretty voice. Would you ask Mr. Blandings, when he arrives, to call Mrs. Blandings at home? Oh, you've got a, such a pretty voice. Who are you? Have you got that message now? Yes, I got the message, but who should I say you give it to me? Uh, never mind. Be sure to tell Mr. Blanding to call his home. That's a very pretty boy. Goodbye. Uh, won't you tell me? Hmm. Who are you talking to, Papa? Uh, uh, business, Mama. Uh, yes, I hear a very pretty business. Uh, Mama, please, don't hit me. Oh, Mama, I... please, I've got to give I a message. You, so, I... Mama, put down the coffee pot. I will put it down, the Papa, right under your head. But I've got to give a message to <laughs> you. <laughs> Jim Blandings, Mama Macaroni. You remember me. What happened? Can I do anything to help? You out of who? Jim Blandings. Out of the way, sir. I have to get a stretcher to the door. Oh, oh I know, Kenneth. Well, what happened? I hit the papa with a little caustic pot. Any coffee in it? Not a cup. Who? Oh. Honest, mister, I didn't know it was loaded. You <laughs> deserve him right for talking that way to pretty girl. I warned him. Hmm? Who are you? I told you, I'm Jim Blandings. I'm here to have dinner with my wife. She'll be here any minute. All right, all right. But until she come, you no make eyes at pretty girl or I give it to you with my coffee pot. All right. But if the worst comes to the worst, Mama, remember one thing. What's the that? I just take one lump. <laughs> <laughs> Forces frontier outpost in the Aleutians to the garrison at the Panama Canal, from Korea to the training camps at home. Yes, in many parts of the world today, you'll find the vigilant men of our armed forces. Daily, these men are protecting the heritages that each of us treasures so dearly. And during National Defense Week, the nation honors all branches of the service for the magnificent job they are doing. They're showing the rest of the world how strongly we believe in all our freedoms. The freedom to worship as we choose, to speak our own minds, and to enter a job of our own choice. These men are also adding a greater glory, a greater dignity to such documents as the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States, and the Bill of Rights. It is only right that we, the nation, should honor the men whose job it is to defend these American heritages. And as members of the armed forces return to their homes from posts overseas or within the continental United States, TWA, Trans World Airlines, feels that it has a special privilege and duty to extend to these men the same respect, honor, and courtesy which they so courageously defend for us. And because of the special kinship between men and women with wings, TWA today salutes the airmen of the Air Forces, the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard, who stand watch for us wherever and whenever duty calls. And now the second act of Mr. and Mrs. Blanding, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake. Poor, sensitive Jim Blanding. He tried so hard not to forget that he remembered an anniversary a week in advance. Papa Macaroni, who was to have told Jim to call Muriel, has been brained with a coffee pot. And so Muriel is waiting in vain for a telephone call from Jim. And Jim in Mama Macaroni's restaurant is waiting in vain for Muriel. 
Uh, good evening, Mr. Blandings. You expect Mrs. Blandings? Oh, yeah, she should be here quite soon. Oh, it's nice, nice. You, uh, you like, uh, you like it for order now, senor? No, no, I'll wait for my wife. She'll be here any second. <laughs> Look, you sure you know you like for all the summer things, senor? No, thank you. Mrs. Van Lee should be here any minute now. You change your mind, senor, about to make order drink? How long have I been here? Just about an hour, senor. Mm. Bring me a dubon egg. You like it for all your dinner, senor? I beg one. I say you like it for all your dinner. No, no. But bring me some change, please. If I may use your telephone, I'll call my house, find out what's happened. Uh, uh. Well, look who's here. Peekaboo. Hmm? What? Well, take your hands away from my eyes. Who is it? Yes. Muriel, you borrowed more perfume for shade. Wrong guess. Try again. Mm. Mama Macaroni? Try again. Mother? <laughs> well, now, really. Well, if you'll take your hands away from my eyes, then I can guess. Hello there. Surprised to see me? Why, uh, yes. <laughs> you don't remember me. Yes, I do. You're, uh, uh... Well, of course. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lettuce Nightingale Trap. Now... Here tonight to discuss dropping the trap. That is Nightingale, upon my word. Mm-hmm. Remember that Sunday school picnic before you went off to college? Oh, what a gay blade you were, and what a time we had. Oh, you haven't changed a bit, Charlie. No, I'm Jim. Oh, Jim. Remember that robo drifting away from everyone? No, that was Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, of course. How is he? I haven't the faintest idea. <laughs> uh, what are you doing here this evening? I am celebrating an anniversary. What a Quincy Quan, so am I. <laughs> Second anniversary of trying to get a fair property settlement from my husband. <laughs> oh, that is a Quincy Quan. <laughs> Tell me, when was the first anniversary? Last week. Uh-oh. <laughs> Mind if I join you, my lawyer arrives? Well, I was just about to call my wife. Oh, and, we'll do it and... in a minute. She won't mind. Memory of old times. <laughs> Maud, I think it's most peculiar that Mr. Blanding hasn't telephoned yet. He must have gotten the message almost two hours ago. He was acting very strange before he left this morning. Don't be an idiot, Maud. He's simply talking about the anniversary he thinks we're having. And you should have had the good sense to tell me about it. But he told me not to tell you. Do you realize that if you had told me, his teeth would be clean by now? <laughs> I'd better telephone the restaurant and find out what's happened. <laughs> Macaroni's Italian restaurant. Mama Macaroni speaking. Is Mr. Blanding there? Who? Mr. Jim Blanding. His secretary reserved a table for him and Mrs. Blanding. And I... Oh, Blandy, of course. Yes, yes, he's here celebrating. Very sweet. Very oh, sweet. Then may I? Oh, marriage is so beautiful. You should see them. Them? See, see. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Blandy. He's been so nice to her. He's with Mrs. Blanding? Oh, see, she's a very pretty blonde hair. Oh, Mrs. Blanding. But Mrs. Blanding is here. No, she's not. She's here. She's me. She's a you. She isn't her. <laughs> oh. 
Two men are all alike. Shall I give him for you? I got the coffee pot right here. <laughs> or do you want to speak to him first? No, I do not want to speak to him. And don't hit him with the coffee pot. I want to do that myself. <laughs> You're not paying attention, Charlie. But, Levis, I'm Jim. I'm not Charlie. Honey, are you sure you were on that Sunday school picnic? No, I'm not. Then why did you say you were? I didn't say so. You did. Well, I don't think you were. Well, I don't think I was. <laughs> I know you, don't I? Uh, please. What did you say your husband's name was? Lawrence Trapp. Did I say that? No, you didn't. Well, I know Lawrence Trapp. Did he introduce you to me? Uh, yes, I remember now. We met at the theater one well, night. You and... certainly were going out of your way to make me feel very silly. I thought you were Charlie. I was not going out of my way to make you feel silly. You certainly were. I certainly were not, was not. <laughs> you thought I was Charlie. I didn't. Oh, Mr. Lansing, you should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, now, Mama, put down that coffee pot. But men are all alike. I'm ashamed for you. And so am I. Really, Charlie. I told her your wife, and Mr. Blandy. She was uh, very angry when I talked to her on the phone. Oh, is she on the phone now? Excuse me, I'll answer it right away. She hung up. I'll call her back. She'll hang up. Excuse me. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> operator, operator, get me Lansdale, Connecticut, please. Lansdale, 431, ring two. Yes, I'll wait. Huh? Oh, how much? Oh, all right. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Muriel. This is Jim. Oh, don't hang up. She hung up. <laughs> what a bore for you. Let's go and have dinner. That is, I don't want to discuss Charlie anymore. Come on. Be a sport. You used to be a sport. That is, you are gravely mistaken. I never was a sport. Hello, Mrs. Trapp. Uh, hello, Mr. Twin. Uh, Jim, this is my lawyer. You're the correspondent in this case? By the what? Mr. Twin, this is Mr. Blanding. Uh, well, how do you do? I haven't time to waste, Blanding. Let's get right down to business. Is it true that you want to marry Mrs. Trapp? Uh, give me some change for this dollar, please. I've got to call my wife. As counsel for your fiancée, I'll do no such thing. She is not my fiancée. I don't even know her. Speak to Charlie. How dare you drag poor, innocent Charlie into this? Why, he suffers from sinus. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been planning. Yes, don't bother me. Okay. Here's the roses, the audit for you, lady. Oh, gee, thanks. Worm and water, we'll need them for evidence. Why, just a minute. As the card goes with us. It says, thank you, darling, for ten wonderful years. May it always go on like this. I'll take that card, too. <laughs> That'll be ten bucks, Mr. Blanding. Will you be quiet? I'm trying to talk to my wife. You what? Well, oh, you lead an interesting life, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Blanding, this is time I mean a business. I'm going to hit you with the coffee pot, you brute. Holy smoke, another one. Now, Mama, don't hit me with that coffee pot. I warn you. I wouldn't advise that. Go ahead. The suspense is killing me. Hit him. <laughs> Now, Mama, this is what you deserve. No, 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 don't, Mama, don't, 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 don't hit me. What are you doing up at three in the morning? Jim, where were you? I was so worried about you. Oh, you're speaking to me now. Of course. Where were you? Well, never tell the children I was in jail. How dare you go to jail? Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't even let me use the telephone. You wouldn't have answered anyway. Of course I would. Hmm. Want me to tell you what happened? Yes, what happened? Well, Mama Macaroni hit me with a coffee pot. Then a fight broke up. Then everybody was bundled into the patrol wagon. There wasn't a seat left. I had to stand up all the way. <laughs> what a sordid story. Yes, it is, and I'm too tired to go on with it. Where were you? What a fine anniversary. Jim, the anniversary isn't until next week. Well, then, then what were you trying to remind me of last night? Your regular appointment to have your teeth cleaned. To... Oh, <laughs> Muriel, can't we do without this anniversary? 
I never want to see Mama Macaroni's again. Yes, we can do without it. But you better remember where we're supposed to dine alone together the week after next, and why. Why what? We celebrate getting engaged. Well, I thought that was what we were doing every year at Mama Macaroni's restaurant. No, that's when you proposed. But didn't you accept? I accepted a week later at the colony. Well, why haven't I known about this? Well, I thought you did. Every year on June 3rd, we dined at the colony. Well, I thought that was because we were celebrating your telling me about our going to have Susan. No, that's not until next month. <laughs> the next month we celebrate your telling me about our going to have June. Oh, no. We celebrate that the month after next. <laughs> Do we have anything to celebrate after that? No. We start all over again at the beginning. Grant and Betsy Drake will be back with us in just a moment. This here report is brought to y'all by y'all. The kindly old sewing detergent y'all adds to your wall. Y'all got something and something and something and something and something and something can you just about up your little old ears and toes. You ride the airwaves, fiery stairways, smoother and swifter, flying the whole and the best way to fly. Here again are Carrie Grant and Betsy Drake. Then we all go. Tell me. Are there any months that we don't have an anniversary? Hmm? No, none that oh yes. Yeah. July. Well, well, Muriel, you mean you can't remember the big anniversary in July? Why, no, I... Well, that's when TWA celebrates its 22nd year of service across the country. Oh, yes. Imagine, it once took 48 hours to fly from coast to coast. But this year, a TWA constellation can fly from Los Angeles to New York in only 9 hours and 40 minutes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Or from New York to London in less than half a day. So you can see what a big anniversary it is. Well, then, you ought to do something nice for your friends at TWA. What do you mean? Well, invite them all over to see the floor show at Mama Macaroni's restaurant. Well, now, there's no floor show there. Well, there will be when Mama hits you over the head with the coffee pot. Oh. <laughs> Good night, Muriel. Good night, Charlie. Same time, same station for Mr. and Mrs. Landing. Starring Gary Grant and Betsy Drake. Brought to you by Trans World Airlines. Across the U.S. and overseas, you can depend on TWA. Betsy Drake appears to the courtesy of RKO Pictures and David O. Selznick. Watch for the next Selznick release, Gypsy Blood. Starring Jennifer Jones and produced in Technicolor. Tonight's show is written by M. Winkle. Directed by Warren Lewis and transcribed in Hollywood. Don Stanley speaking.